Hello, I'm Francine York, and I'm pleased to present this program to help you maintain and strengthen your back for better health and, in turn, a better quality of life. Do you have any idea what your chances of having some form of back trouble during your lifetime are? 20%, 40%, 60%? The answer is 80%. Surprised? It's true. 80% of all people will experience back trouble. Without question, back pain is one of the most common ailments that affect modern man. According to the American Institute of Preventative Medicine, about 80 million people in the U.S. currently have back pain. Yet four out of five of these back aches could have been avoided. Back pain is not a new problem. Since ancient times, man has been afflicted with back trouble. Many old medical textbooks, some dating back to the days of Hippocrates, contain illustrations plus descriptions of a diversity of treatment methods. Some of these treatments may seem strange to us today and maybe even funny, but it was the beginning into the evolutionary process of the treatment of back pain. Many view the erect bipedal carriage of man as the cause of its development, or at the very least a contributing factor. In other words, when primitive man stood erect, he dominated the animal kingdom, but he also acquired something else, back trouble. Whatever the cause, back pain has become an increasing burden to the health and economy of the industrialized world. Back pain is one of the most common reasons for seeking doctor's advice, preceded only by headaches and the common cold. Back pain is the leading cause of absenteeism in the workplace and ranks third behind heart disease and arthritis in workers between the ages of 45 to 64. The costs of the problem are staggering and estimated to exceed $50 billion per year. This figure can be tripled when indirect costs such as administering health insurance claims, training new workers to replace disabled employees, and lost productivity are calculated. Added to these monetary costs are the costs of the quality of life for millions who suffer for long periods of time. So what can be done to prevent this disability from happening in your life? Well, the underlying cause of 80% of back pain is alleged to be from lack of exercise, or should I say lack of proper exercise. I've heard some people say, I get plenty of exercise. I play golf, tennis, softball, and I swim once in a while too. These types of exercise offer little help and may even be the cause of some back pain. One has to follow a specific program and be consistent with it. In other words, make it a way of life. Take care of your back and it will take care of you. The major premise of this program is that the real problem with back pain is not usually the individual episode, but rather the high rate of recurrence, which could possibly be as high as 90%. Through a group of experts presented here, we'll try to explain some of the most important factors in preventing this recurrence, instruct you on what to do when the attacks do happen, and to maintain your health through proper exercise. We will talk to Dr. Bernard Rimlin, who is a nutrition researcher, lecturer, author, and back expert, Dr. Eric Stalzer. Later, I'll show you some special exercises to prevent back problems or to help you with the pain that you're now experiencing. Once you've seen this tape, I feel you'll have a more comprehensive idea of how to care for your back and just how the back works. Now, let's go and meet Dr. Eric Stalzer. I'm here in Calabasas, California with back expert Dr. Eric Stalzer, who will answer some of the many questions you may have about maintaining a strong and healthy back throughout your life. Well, Dr. Stalzer, let's get to the main question. What is the cause of back problems? Well, there really is no one cause of back pain, but rather it's a complex interaction of a variety of factors. These factors can include poor posture, poor lifting techniques, poor work habits, uh, just general decline of people's health. Would you say that bad posture is the primary cause? Yes, there's a definite major contributing factor. Uh, many studies have shown that uh, people who tend to spend most of their day in a flex forward type of position such as sitting or lifting without bending their knees do have a higher incidence of back pain. Like the secretary that sits at her desk all day typing it on the phone? Yes, it's very important that a secretary sit properly, but it also is important that she changes the environment that she's sitting in to suit her because everybody is of different heights and weights. Then that includes the proper height of the desk as well as the proper positioning of her chair. Well, what is good posture and how does one maintain it throughout the day? Most people, when they think of good posture, think of a military stance with someone's at attention. However, the thing people usually do forget is that they have to maintain this good posture throughout the day with everything they do, including when they lift, 
when they're sitting and when they're doing just normal daily activities. What else can poor posture cause? Well, poor posture can affect the health and general well-being of an individual. Poor posture contributes to shallow breathing, faulty digestion, and a cramped chest cavity. These things all together cause a lack of energy. In other words, good posture, better health. It certainly helps. Dr. Stalzer, what can the loss of flexibility cause? Well, the spine is a complex biomechanical structure, like a finely tuned car. If any one part of the structure fails to do its job, the entire structure suffers. Some examples of this are joints that, are, that do not function properly, muscles that are weak or spasm, and nerves that are irritated or inflamed. Well, there's one problem that we all share in today's society, and that's the increasing level of stress. Can this tr trigger an episode of back pain? Yes. As with many other factors, it tends to have a cumulative effect on, on the back and may trigger an episode of back pain. But one of the things that can be done for this is relaxation exercise that we teach our patients so they can do them just about anywhere. What about aging in the back? Well, if older people keep up a regular exercise plan throughout their life, it can definitely help eliminate at least part of the problem because as we age, many of us tend to become increasingly less active. The couch potato syndrome? Well, a couch potato syndrome can occur in any age group. However, it does become more prevalent in the elderly. They tend to gain weight, exercise less, eat on the run, and perhaps do a lot of TV snacking and then going to bed. As a result, health suffers. And as one might expect, individuals in good health have definitely less problems with their backs. In other words, your back is in your hands. Yes, gradually we just hope to replace old habits with, with newer ones, and that will set the foundation for a stronger, much more flexible back. Would you explain the structure of the spine so one could understand more clearly how it functions? Sure. As you know and can see, the spine is a remarkable anatomical structure. It's sturdy enough to support the upper body, yet it's flexible enough to allow movement. It must accomplish all of these functions without irritating or injuring these delicate and important structures. What's the first step in learning how to take care of your back? Well, first you must understand how the back works. The back is made up of muscles, bone, discs, ligaments, and nerves. The back muscles comprise a large portion of the body muscles, and they're responsible for creating movement, controlling movement, and stabilizing the body. Do muscles show up in x-rays? No, they don't, and that's why a lot of doctors tell their patients that their back problems are really not serious if a muscle injury is suspected. What do you do for muscle strain problems? The way we treat muscle strains is we use various modalities, including heat, cold, ultrasound, and electrical stimulation. However, rest is important at that stage, and muscles eventually do need to be exercised to stay healthy. I guess you could say use it or lose it. Yes, you could say that. You mentioned bones. Um, what are they responsible for? Well, the spine is made up of a series of small bones that are called vertebra. These bones provide the structural framework of the spine and are designed to provide both stability and motility. The bones are also responsible for the protection of the spinal cord. They also serve as a framework for the attachment of muscles and ligaments. Do bone injuries appear on x-rays or, or do they include fractures and dislocations? Yes, these injuries include both fractures and dislocations that occur in the spine and we can see those on x-rays. However, in addition we also see the wear and tear of aging that we call osteoarthritis that appear on the x-rays. I hear a lot about people with disc problems. What exactly are discs and where are they situated on the spine? Well, the discs are actually ligaments that are situated between the bones of the spine. They have a firm outer portion and a center filled with a stiff jelly-like substance. Like a jelly donut? Yes, much like a jelly donut. The discs are responsible for weight-bearing and shock absorption, allowing movement between the vertebrae. But does something happen to the disc as a person ages? Yes, the discs tend to dry out as we age, and sometimes they can actually split and cracks appear in the outer portion of the disc. This can sometimes cause the jelly to ooze out towards the outside and pinching on a nerve. This can cause pressure on the surrounding tissues and can definitely lead to back pain. This is referred to as a herniated disc. Am I right to understand that discs like muscles do not appear on x-rays? Yes, discs you cannot see on x-rays. However, we do have things such as computerized tomography or magnetic resonance imaging that will show the discs much better. Well, how often is surgery involved or is, is it really necessary? Well, many patients with disc problems can overcome them with exercise and good back habits. Surgery is becoming less and less prevalent, however it is used in extreme cases. Well, so far you've explained muscles, bones, and discs in the spine. What relation do the nerves have to the spine? Well, the spine functions as a connection between the brain and the rest of the body. The 
The spinal cord is housed in the spinal column and is connected via the spinal, spinal nerves. These nerves exit through small openings between the vertebra. The nerves are responsible for balance and coordination, sensation, and movement. Injury to the nerves may also be seen in changes in muscles, such as a loss of motor strength or coordination. Nerves do not show up on x-rays, but are confirmed using special diagnostic procedures, such as EMGs or nerve conduction velocity testing. A friend of mine recently told me that he had torn ligaments in his back. What can you do when this occurs? Well, ligaments are fibrous tissue that provide support for your muscles and back. When you stretch them too far, they can tear and cause severe pain. The treatment for the ligaments is basically to let them heal by themselves. However, you can help this along by avoiding stretching or twisting, especially while you're lifting, because this can also cause further ligament damage. Okay, Dr. Stalzer, I've been exercising, watching how I sit, lifting correctly, I'm eating a healthy diet, I stay trim, and all of a sudden, whammo, I bend over to put on my shoes, and I feel this terrible pain in my back and absolutely panic. What should I do? Well, the first thing you should do is stop whatever it is you were doing, catch your breath, and find a pain-reducing, comfortable position. Also, we recommend at that point that you practice the relaxation techniques that we give our patients. Possibly perform some mild exercises and apply an ice pack to the lower back for 15 minutes every other hour. Positions and activities that cause or increase the back pain, numbness, or tingling in the buttocks and legs should definitely be avoided at this point. Thank you, Dr. Stalzer, for these very informative facts on the back for better health, better back, and better life. Thank, Thank you. you. And now come with me for more interesting facts on the back. Lifting safely in an office environment is very important for the prevention of back injury or pain of any kind. But what can we do in an office to prevent accidents from occurring or from just plain on-the-job stress? Watch carefully for the next few minutes and you'll discover some tips for the safety of your back and also just how the back works. Working is great exercise. The more you work and the more motion you give your body, the better off you'll be. Let's take that true statement and examine some of the experiences everyone has from time to time. First, working is great exercise. That's true, but everybody has different jobs and you're not always working 24 hours a day. Even at work, there's time when you really aren't performing physical labor or moving around much. Each of us perform different jobs at different times and at different physical levels. Let's say you're riding in a vehicle to the job. You're not really moving your body and all of a sudden, it's time to work. But is your body really ready to work? As you may have guessed, this program is about exercise and how your body needs exercise to stay healthy and less prone to injury. Specifically, let's target your back. Because back injuries or back pain affects 8 out of 10 people sometimes in their lives. Before you get excited and think we're talking about aerobics or massive workouts at Gold's Gym, forget it. These programs are great for health nuts and athletes, but we're talking about simple things you can do before you start to work. Before we get into some simple exercises, let's take about a minute and a half to review why exercise is important to your back. Back exercise helps strengthen and increase flexibility in the muscles and joints that support your back. 15 minutes of exercise about three to five times a week will condition the muscles that keep your back healthy and balanced. Your back has three natural curves to it cervical curve or your neck, the thoracic or your middle back, and the lumbar curve or your lower back. You've all heard about good posture, but all it means is keeping your curves in balance. When all three curves are balanced, your ear, shoulder, and hips line up straight. Good posture or balance is important when sitting, standing, and lying down. The lumbar curve is the real workhorse of your spine. It carries the most weight and moves the most. The discs in your back act like shock absorbers. The discs are actually soft cushions that separate the vertebrae or bones and absorb shock as you move. Discs are filled with fluid which allows flexibility to move, bend, and do all the things you do every day. The fluid inside the discs move as you move. During sleeping hours, the nucleus of the disc fills with this fluid. The outer part of the disc then has less fluid, so when you wake up, it's less flexible. During the day, fluid is pushed in and out of the nucleus as you move. Once you get this fluid to the entire part of the disc, the more flexible you become and the less likely you are to have an injury. 
Certainly, there's more to your back than what was just described. But the point we want to make is, your back, just like an automobile, needs to warm up before you start driving it. If you first start your motor and immediately drive away, you're not getting oil to all the right parts, and pretty soon the friction inside the motor parts will cause problems. The next step is the repair shop. It's the same thing with your body. A little exercise in the right places allows your body to warm up, then you're ready to tackle the job at hand. What about the exercises we talked about? What about exercises in the workplace? Have guys and gals learning how to exercise during their lunch or coffee break at work? Also construction workers who are always lifting heavy loads and bending, twisting and so on. One bad move and they could be laid up for months. With proper exercises, this can be prevented. Learning how to stretch and keep your back mobile is the most important thing. A few minutes a day during a lunch or coffee break could make all the difference. Isometric exercises with hands pushed together will also work. Stretching while sitting, touching the floor gives your back good exercise. Hands clasp below your waist and pulling down. Hands over your head, movement, movement, movement. It's also fun to get a group together to give each other a little moral support. Stomach lifts on the floor are also good to keep the stomach firm to protect against strain. Any good exercise you do will keep your back stronger. Of course, always check with your doctor first. Once he gives the okay, just get out there and do it. That's what we're talking about. Short exercises to get your back into shape for the job you're going to perform. Nothing complicated, nothing exotic, and certainly not anything you can't do. If this out of shape, short, fat, bald headed, and not too bright guy can do it, so can you. We all would be healthier if we weren't overweight, maintained a regular exercise program, ate the right foods, and took better care of our bodies. But that's your business. This program is designed simply to help you reduce your chances of having a back injury. It's a proven fact that those people who warm up before beginning to work have few back injuries. If you take a few minutes to exercise before you start to work, you're less likely to experience an injury. And who knows, it might lead to bigger and better things in your life. Thank you. According to the National Safety Council and medical research, 20% of backaches are attributed to inflammation such as arthritis. 10% are due to actual back injuries and other miscellaneous causes. 70% result from degeneration of spinal discs. That's right, aging of the spinal disc material causes the most trouble and can cause extreme pain even from routine body motions. You've all heard the routine warnings about bending your knees and lifting with your legs. We see people lifting boxes to demonstrate the proper technique. Those techniques are still correct, but we don't always pick up a box or the item we want to lift is sitting under a storage rack or other difficult position. Today we want to explain how the back works so you'll have enough information to make the right choices on how to lift anything safely. We'll also discuss how strains and muscles work so you can prevent these types of back injuries also. There's no magic formula. All you need is a good attitude about safety and are willing to think about safety every time you lift anything. If you'll do that, it's difficult to have an injury. First, let's talk about the mechanics of the back. Each disc is a circular pad filled with gelatinous substance under pressure. The disc looks like a soft hockey puck with jelly on the inside. The disc works like shock absorbers or springs that provide a linkage to the vertebrae or bones but prevents any sliding of one vertebra against another. 
The spinal cord is a bundle of nerves in a protected vertical passage behind the disc area. Nerve roots branch out through spaces between each vertebra and go to different parts of the body. The normal range of spinal movement is shown here, while bending forward and backward. You can see the nerve roots are in a vulnerable position because the spinal cord must bend and flex without the vertebrae slipping out of alignment. It is quite easy to wear out a disc with normal movement. As you bend and move, your discs are working, just like the shock absorbers in your automobile. Discs can become damaged through excessive twisting, turning, bending, and when this happens, the disc may spring a slow leak. Now, as the fluid leaks out, you can lose disc pressure. This loss of pressure in one disc can affect the entire linkage. It can happen at almost any age. You don't have to be old to wear out your disc. Back pain sufferers should pay constant attention to posture, standing, sitting, working, even while sleeping. The lumbar flexion, or dynamic posture as shown here, helps widen the opening that nerve roots pass through and reduce the chance of pinches. Regular exercise is encouraged, which promotes flexibility of the muscles and all the other body parts to keep you healthy. Okay, let's talk about those muscle strains. Actually, when you stretch, ligaments in your back stretch also. Now, if you stretch too far, these ligaments may tear or overstretch. They can be quite painful. Many times, we must lift something over our head, so you're going to stretch your arms to reach the object. The best way would be to set the lifted object on a table or other support, then reposition the object so your arms are doing the lifting, not your back. As a minimum, reposition your grip on the object to keep the weight centered. Arching the back during a lift makes nerve roots susceptible to pinching. Just remember how the discs protect the back and try to make the lift with your back as straight or in a normal position as possible. When you do this, the discs can do their job without damage and the ligaments aren't stretched so far that they'll tear. Naturally, medical research has provided us with some basics about your back to help you understand how the back works. The back works like any other machine on the lever principle. You have a load and a counter load. The load you're lifting and your back balanced on a pivot point or center of gravity. The heavier the load, the more counterweight you need or some position to help offset that load. The back has a 10 to 1 ratio to the object you're lifting. If an object you're lifting weighs 10 pounds, it's going to take 100 pounds of pressure in your back to lift the object. This puts a lot of pressure on those delicate discs. Add in more weight, more length of the lever or an awkward position, then you're adding much more pressure on those discs and, of course, the ligaments. That's why you hear safety and medical personnel telling everyone to bend your legs and squat down near the object you're going to lift. This keeps the discs lined correctly between the bones. Get a good palm grip. Don't use your fingertips. The palm grip is designed to make sure the object you're lifting doesn't slip out of your hands. Lift the object slowly to prevent any jerking movements that can cause discs to move out of their proper alignment and bring the object close to your body. This reduces the lifting pressure based upon the 10 to 1 ratio of the lever. The closer the load, the less pressure it takes to lift. You have a good grip. The object is close to your body. Now stand up. You're using your leg power to do the lifting, not your back. That's the standard method of lifting safely, and it does work. Now, how about the more difficult lifting situations, such as trying to lift different types of objects in a less than ideal situation? Let's take a look. Did you notice how he used his free hand to provide support for some of the lifting? Anything you can use to provide additional support is great for your back. Whenever you have a particularly difficult load to lift, you can use your good judgment and make the right decision how to lift properly. Naturally, if the load is too awkward or heavy for one person, get some help. Safe lifting doesn't have to be perfect, but it does have to be done safely. Twisting your back while lifting is extremely dangerous. Find another way to lift, because it only takes one wrong way to cause a problem. 
Perhaps you have been lifting improperly, twisting and lifting and stretching, and your back is still in good condition. Well, that doesn't mean you haven't injured your discs. Perhaps it just means that time, age, and body mechanics just haven't caught up with you yet. Maybe it means you're healthy and just one of those persons that will never get sick or experience an injury. Well, you're fortunate. But we urge each individual to practice safe lifting all the time, at home, play, and at work. Back injuries can be prevented, but you're the only person who has control over your well-being. The most important part of safe lifting, actually any type of job and home safety, is having the right attitude about safety and thinking about safety before you perform each task. Take time for safety because it's important to you, your family, and your job. Thank you. Wasn't that interesting? All those wonderful tips how to keep your back fit and healthy. Start today on a back awareness program for better health tomorrow. I'm here with Dr. Bernard Rimland, who is a nationally known researcher, lecturer, and author in the field of nutrition. He'll give us some tips on nutrition for your back and general health and well-being. Hello, Dr. Rimlin. My pleasure, Very good to see you. What a role does good nutrition play in a healthy back? Good nutrition plays an enormously important role in a healthy back, just as it does, of course, with the entire body. What foods do you recommend and which ones should be avoided? The foods to avoid are the foods that have been through a factory processed foods that come in jars and cans and cellophane bags. Those foods contain typically a lot of sugar, a lot of fat, a lot of salt, and the nutritional content in terms of the vitamins and minerals you need has been greatly depleted. I know that milk and milk products are a good source of calcium, but what if, like myself, one is allergic to milk? What do you do? Well, there are many sources of calcium. I personally don't drink milk and have not drank milk for many, many years. Uh, and I'm not allergic to it. Uh, uh, my major source of calcium is uh, calcium supplements. I purchase and consume uh, calcium and magnesium supplements which are readily available. Uh, each of us should have something like a thousand milligrams a day of calcium and perhaps four or five hundred of magnesium and the calcium supplements that contain those are readily available. It, in addition to that one can get plenty of calcium from one's diet if one eats a lot of green leafy vegetables or green vegetables including broccoli well, speaking of supplements, what other supplements do you recommend? I think it's critically important for people living in this century to take nutritional supplements. Even if you try to eat a very good diet, you will not succeed in many instances because the, the soil has been depleted of many minerals. And so that I think that people should try to eat a good diet, but in addition to that, if they have back pain, they should be taking the calcium and the magnesium supplements, and in addition, some other supplements as well. Vitamin C is critically important, not only to the construction of the back, but also to general health. I would recommend at least two, three, two to three thousand milligrams a day of vitamin C to everybody, whether or not they have back pain. In addition to that, there are certain trace minerals that are extremely important for the back. The uh, trace mineral manganese, the trace mineral boron, the trace mineral zinc are especially important in the development of the bone and the cartilage of the back. Uh, one should go to a health food store or other source of vitamins and minerals and try to find a really good trace mineral supplement in addition to the C, in addition to the calcium and magnesium supplement I mentioned earlier. Smoking and alcohol, are they a deterrent to good back health? Well, smoking and alcohol has an adverse effect on every organ of the body. Uh, it's well known that, that, that uh, that's the case. However, in the case of back pain, uh, the uh, Smoking destroys vitamin C. Vitamin C is critically important to the development of bones and to the cartilage in the discs. So that uh, one who smokes should be taking, if they can't stop smoking, they should be taking extra amounts of vitamin C. At least, at least uh, two or three thousand milligrams extra a day of vitamin C. Uh, drinking uh, alcohol uh, reduces greatly the trace mineral content of the body, especially magnesium. So the trace mineral supplements that I mentioned earlier should be consumed, uh, and especially by people who uh, drink or smoke. I'm going to be showing some exercises toward the end of this tape. How do you feel about exercising and strengthening the back? Everyone that's ever studied back problems emphasizes the critical role of exercise in maintaining back integrity, critically important. And the uh, exercise, of course, if a, 
uh, if a person is not been exercising, should be started out gradually and built up to. But uh, it's, it's just a component that cannot be avoided if one wants to have a healthy back. A friend of mine recently had a back operation, and he's not really doing very well. How do you feel about back surgery? Even physicians who uh, at one time were recommending back surgery as a treatment for back pain have begun to retreat from that position. Much research has been done, more, most particularly recently by the RAND Corporation, to evaluate different means of uh, treating back pain. And surgery is one of the least effective and one of the most uh, expensive and intrusive and dangerous methods of treating back pain. Uh, a friend of mine who was a physician and uh, who studied industrial medicine and had many, many years of experience with back problems found that his daughter was scheduled for back surgery, his adult daughter, and he tried to persuade her not to do it because uh, he had been experienced with you know, hundreds and if not thousands of cases of people with back pain. He told her that it very seldom helped and it often creates more problems than it helps. And uh, he could not persuade her. Her physician had told her that she needed back surgery and she went ahead and did it despite her own father's uh, very uh, concerned recommendation against it. If we were to summarize all this, and I came to you and I said, well, uh, Dr. Rimland, I have this back problem. What can I do? <laughs> what would you say to me? Well, if you came to me, I would not give the same advice I would give to most people. I would not tell you to lose weight because you don't need to. I would not tell you to stop drinking or smoking because you don't. But the ordinary person who has a back problem who does need to lose weight or to stop drinking or smoking would get that advice. They would be told to improve their diet so that they're taking a lot of their food in the form of uh, fresh fruits and vegetables and uh, white meats as opposed to red meats, avoiding foods that come in packages, avoiding processed foods, eating fresh fruits and vegetables as the cavemen would, and also to take nutritional supplements, particularly calcium and magnesium, perhaps a thousand milligrams per day of calcium and half that of magnesium, uh, to take trace minerals such as uh, boron and manganese and zinc, and especially vitamin C, two or three thousand milligrams per day of vitamin C, and a little vitamin D as well if they don't get a lot of sunshine or drink milk, which contains vitamin D. Uh, one point that I'd like to emphasize uh, is that if a person has back pains and they decide to take the route that I have recommended, that they should not expect immediate relief. Uh, it is not like taking a painkiller like aspirin or some other form of uh, analgesic. The idea behind the program that I've recommended uh, including the exercise and nutrition and the supplements and so forth, improving the diet, is that one is rebuilding the back. One is starting from scratch and giving the back the proper nutritive substances that it needs to build strong discs and strong vertebrae and increase the strength of the muscles, and all that takes time. It will take a matter of months before the back is back in repair and the, functioning the way it should. It's a bit like growing a garden. One does not add fertilizer and then come out the next morning and expect the plants to be fully grown. What you're doing with your back is to improve its nutritional status and that will cause new cells to build, new muscles to build, new bone to build, and one will be able to build himself a new back in a, in a matter of months, which will be much, uh, make a much better life. This has all been very interesting and I'm sure very informative for our viewers. Thank you again, Dr. Rivera. My Rimmel. great pleasure, Thank Francine. You. Now we get to the exercise part of the program. Why is exercise important? To achieve and maintain a healthy back and body, to lower the risk of back problems from both natural and accidental causes. One of the main problems is, you guessed it, motivation. Good health is a goal that we all strive for. But health requires a commitment. As you know, it's a lot easier to talk about exercising than doing it. One of the most common excuses is, I just don't have the time. Make the time, get motivated, it's worth it. Make it a pleasure rather than a pressure. Think about the positive aspects of what you're doing for yourself while exercising. Think about all the benefits you'll receive. Find the time, get moving for better health. Lack of exercise not only weakens back muscles, it makes the back more susceptible to injuries such as strain and torn ligaments as we've already discussed. Doctors, physical therapists, and other health professionals Realize the value you'll receive with a constant exercise program. Don't think of exercise as drudgery. Create an exercising mood with lively music, bright lights, and your own imagination. Imagine yourself happier, healthier than you've ever been in your whole life. 
But remember, it's important to check with your doctor before starting any exercise program. You should exercise regularly, but use moderation. If you haven't exercised for a long time or ever, start easy. Don't overdo. You know how you can get. When that happens, you can get discouraged, so you want to quit. No one wants to be in pain. Ease into an exercise program. Just 15 minutes a day of exercise, three to five days a week is all it takes to condition your back and keep your muscles strong and healthy. Consistency counts. Without regular exercises, you can lose elasticity of your muscles, your reflexes can become impaired, and you can be prone to torn muscles or other injuries. The number of repetitions suggested should not be considered minimum or maximum, but merely a recommendation. Vary it to meet your own limitations. It takes time to build up strength. You'll be amazed at how quickly you'll increase the number of repetitions that you're able to do. Well, let's get started. We've already talked about ligaments and how they stretch and can easily be torn. To prevent this, ease into it by stretching first thing in the morning if possible. Here's a back stretch that I do several times a day. Put your hands on your back and we're going to push back to the count of five as far as you can go, back up to the count of two, and repeat it five times. Later on, you can do it 10 or 20, whatever feels comfortable. And here we go. And one, two, three, four, five, back, one, two. And one, two, three, four, five, back, one, two. And one, two, three, four, five, back, one, two. And one, two, three, four, five, back, one, two. One more, two, three, four, five, and back, one, two. Clasp your hands in your back. What we're going to do is we're going to pull down as far as we can towards your thighs and back up again to the count of two. This really, really stretches this entire area and it feels very good. And one, two, three, four, five, back, one, two, and one, two, three, four, five, and back, one, two, and one, two, three, four, five, and back, one, two, and one, two, three, four, five, back, one, two, and stretch, two, three, four, five, and back, one, two, and take a deep breath. One hand on your waist, the other at your side. We're going to stretch to the right and then to the left to the count of five. And one, two, three, four, five, and back, two, three. And one, two, three, four, five, and back, two, three. And one, two, three, four, five, and back, two, three. And one, two, three, four, five, and back, two, three. And one, two, three, four, five, and back, two, three. And one, two, three, four, five, and back, two, three. And deep breath. Hands at your side. We're going to reach down with one hand as close to the knee as you can possibly get without straining to the count of five. We're going to do it four times. And one, two, three, four, five, one, two, and one, two, three, four, five, and one, two. One, two, three, four, five, and one, two. One, two, three, four, five, and rest, one, two. Hands at your side. We're going to reach over to one side to the count of five, back, and then to the other side to the count of five. And we're going to do this four times. And one, two, three, four, five, and back. Three. And one, two, three, four, five, and back, two, three. And one, two, three, four, five, and back, two, three. And one, two, three, four, five, and back, two, three. You can work your way up to about 10 or more of these exercises if you like. This is my own personal favorite exercise. I call it the broom exercise. I have a stick here today. Make sure you have one hand on each side of the stick as far as you can go. And we're going to lift up, we're going to breathe in, and then we're going to exhale. And it's one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three. And one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three. 
And one, two, three, four, five. Feel the stretch. One, two, three. And one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. And one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. And one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. Here are two exercises that can be performed just about anywhere and gives your back a really good workout. Clasp your wrist, and we're going to stretch to the right and then to the left. And stretch and stretch and stretch and stretch and stretch. Pull, stretch, stretch. Feel it in your back. And a few more times. This is a great workout. And still in that same position with your hands clasped like this, we're going to reach the elbow up to the right and then to the left. And right and left and right and left, right, left, right, left, up, up, right, left, right, left. Don't you just feel better already? This one I call my swimming exercise, and you'll see why in a minute. Bend your knees slightly with feet apart. And what we're going to do is we're going to reach and reach and reach and swim like that shark is about ready to catch you from behind and you're trying to get away, OK? And stretch and stretch and reach and reach and feel a pull in your back. This is a marvelous workout. And stretch out as far as you can. And stretch and stretch. Stretch and do this as many times as you can. It's great in the morning, great before you go to bed, or somewhere in the afternoon if you have the time. And stretch and stretch and stretch. A few more times, as many as you can. And remember, stop any time that there's any pain. And take a deep breath. <sighs> this is good for strengthening the back and the stomach muscles. Lie on a mat. Bring up your knees. We're going to pull the stomach into the floor as close to the floor as you can get it for the count of five. Back to the count of three and do it 10 times. Feel those stomach muscles tightening. And one, two, three, four, five, and back, two, three, and one, two, three, four, five, and back, two, three, and one, two, three, four, five, and back, two, three, and one, two, three, four, five, and back, two, three, and one, two, three, four, five, and back, two, three, and one, two, three, four, five, and back, two, three, and one, two, three, four, five, and back, two, three, and one, two, three, four, five, and back, two, three, and one, two, three, four, five, and back, two, three, and one more time, two, three, four, five, and back, two, three. Deep breath in. Relax a minute. Lie on the mat, hands flat on the floor, knees up, and feet as close to the buttocks as possible and flat on the floor. We're going to lift to the count of five as high as you can go without any pain, and down to the count of three, and we're going to do this five times. And one, two, three, four, five, and down to three. And one, two, three, four, five, and down to three. And one, two, three, four, five, and down to three. And one, two, three, four, five, and down to three. And one, two, three, four, five, and down to three. And relax, take a deep breath in and out. Let's do some stomach crunches. Hands clasped behind your head. Breathe in, and on your breath out, you push your stomach in as close as you can to the floor so you feel those muscles tightening. And
Deep breath in and relax. Build up to as many of these as you can possibly do a day. Now for a few leg lifts. We're going to pull our knee up to our chest. Pull, clasp your knee in as hard as you can. Feel the pulling through here and then down. And then the other leg is going to go up. Pull it in as hard as you can without hurting yourself. And down. Okay, and one, two, three, four, five, and down, two, three. And one, two, three, four, five, and down, two, three. And one, two, three, four, five, and down, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, and down, two, three. And one, two, three, four, five, and down, two, three. And one, two, three, four, five, and down, two, three. And one, two, three, four, and five, and down, two, three. And one, two, three, four, five, and down, two, three. If possible, you should work up to 10 on each side. Now both legs up to your chest. Pull in as hard as you can to the count of five and down to the count of three. And one, two, three, four, five, and down, two, three. And one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three. And one, two, three, four, five, and down, two, three. And one, two, three, four, and five, and down, two, three. And one, two, three, four, five, and down, two, three. When you're doing this exercise, make sure that you keep your back muscles here as close to the mat as you possibly can so you put the least strain on your back. Lie on your back, hands stretched out. You're going to take one leg and stretch it over to the right, up and down, then the other leg over to the left. Stretch it out good. Up and down, and here we go. Up, over, back, and down. 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 Up, over, back, and down and down, up, over, back, and down, and up, over, back, and down. Eventually try to work up to 10 to 20 on either side. Hands at your side, level with your shoulders. We're going to push up using your arms only, and it's going to be a one, two, three, Four, five, feel the pull in your lower back, and down, two, three. And here we go. One, two, three, four, five, and down, two, three. And one, two, three, four, and five, and down, two, three. And one, two, three, four, five, and down, two, three. And one, two, three, four, five, and don't strain your back, and one, two, three, four, five, and down, two, three, and one, two, three, four, five, and down, two, three, and one more time, we go up, and down, two, three, and take a deep breath. And exhale, and when you can, work up to 20 repetitions. But remember, any pain, you stop right away. For this one, I put a pillow under my stomach so that you don't strain, OK? So what we're going to do is we're going to lift the right leg up to the count of five, and then the left leg. And here we go. And one, two, three, four, five, and down, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, and down, two, three, and one, two, three, four, five, 
down to three and one, two, three, four, five, and down to three, and one, two, three, four, five, and down to three, and one, two, three, four, five, and down to three, and one, two, three, four, five, and down to three, one, two, three, four, five, and down to three. Take a deep breath in. Exhale. Try to work up to 10 to 20 if you possibly can on each side. But take it easy, as I said before. That's it for the exercise part of this program. We've showed you a lot of things on this tape. Now it's up to you. Do the exercises, eat a well-balanced, healthy diet. Get started today. Be good to yourself. For a better back, better health, better life.